Welcome to the lost episode of the Examined Life of Gaming. I wrote this a while ago. Actually, it was one of the first things I wrote for the show in 2011. I just never ended up using it. Since I wrote this, I've really come around on Clear Sky. None of the things I say in this rant are untrue, they just don't bother me as much anymore. I've left the script completely untouched from the version I hammered out in one very angry half hour four years ago. Alright, punch it. You need to know where I'm coming from when you watch this review. I loved the first Stalker game, Shadow of Chernobyl, and when I played it for the first time, it was a great experience and a breath of fresh air in the tactical shooter market. I hate Clear Sky. Hate it. But I have to play it for the same reason some people have to play Final Fantasy games. It's demonstrably terrible, yes, but the last one was so good. This game is broken. It's annoying. It's tedious. It's an uphill struggle. The most basic mechanic, first-person combat, is broken. Enemies do an exaggerated motion when they get shot, during which they're invincible. They can take way more damage than you, unlike the very well-balanced and realistic Shadow of Chernobyl. For some reason, zombies are the most accurate and dangerous enemies in the game. The game even punishes you for exploring. They are apparently so proud of the beaten path they have built for you that any attempt to leave will result in massive pockets of radiation and psi damage. There's no way around it either. Worse is that stashes are frequently put in these areas. Don't expect to get any good loot though. The cost in med kits and anti-rad, red vodka, alone will make any attempt to explore prohibitively expensive. At times, you get the impression that there is no communication in GSE Game World Studios. One programmer builds a huge level, another programmer fills it with interesting stuff, and the third programmer dumps huge pockets of lethal radiation all over the place with blatant disregard for any world-building efforts of the team at large. NPCs also have huge collision boxes around them. This might have been done to prevent you from getting past them when they try to block doors, but I can't imagine why. First of all, they get in the way all the time. NPCs can't be counted on to move, so you get constant drone jam in tight spaces. Second, they like to push you. They do this sometimes when you're looting corpses, pushing you way off into the distance while you're trying to collect enough rusty AK-74s to break even on the constant repair jobs for your primary weapon and your armor. The game clearly doesn't want you doing your own thing, as evidenced by all the bullshit everywhere, and when the NPCs start pushing you around, it feels like bullying. Way to make me feel like I'm inconveniencing the other characters in the game. When in firefights, they knock you out of cover, and because they are impossible to get around, you sometimes can never get back into cover. The NPCs will block pathways all the time. In the very cramped environments, especially inside bases, a few NPCs will stand on a staircase and literally deny access to a traitor or mechanic. You can't get them to move, you just have to wait. The traders are broken too. They will not give you decent prices on anything. You can barely break even. Artifacts used to be a staple of the series, but Clear Sky evidently decided they were stupid. You can almost never find them. Thus, another method of making meager pocket change dies a death. Traders will charge you 3,000 rubles for a small box of rifle bullets, two or three times as much as you get for selling a brace of pistols and a case of hand grenades. But you need ammunition. You need as much as you can carry and more. In fact, every suit of armor you buy will probably end up with the carrying capacity up installed. Two reasons. One, you need the space to carry weapons back to sell. Since it takes two or three rifles to be able to afford the bullets for a rifle, you need to bring in the loot big time. Two, you need the weight for all the fucking ammo. As mentioned, enemies are just so hard to kill. Every one of them is some kind of radioactive ubermensch, though it's hard to imagine the effects of radiation being so positive on almost everybody in the zone except for you. Mercenary Scar is a fucking pansy. Every single thing makes him bleed. Bandages are expensive. If you fall from a height, you take damage, sure. But you also start bleeding? Is his leg broken so bad the bone is stabbing through the skin? If so, why can he still walk? It's just strange that you would bleed so often. Every firefight will consist of you with one finger on the trigger and the rest of them occupying the med kit, bandage, quick save, and quick load buttons. Enemies can decide to chuck grenades at seemingly any time, regardless of whether or not they've already chucked their body weight and explosives that same firefight. Short version, you'll die a lot. When you fight zombies, it's worse. I don't know how, but they pulled it out. Each zombie can take a ludicrous amount of punishment. I guess this makes sense if going for the reanimated dead sort of zombie feel, but these are just regular dudes with their brains halfway melted. By all rights, they should barely be alive, but Clear Sky makes them the most durable, accurate, and fucking annoying enemy types almost in any game I can think of. So clearly requiring three full loads of buckshot to the noggin or chest to down your average guy in a raincoat is bad. Wrong. A travesty. Crimes against humanity. What have you. But you'll hardly notice. Why? Because when you crouch as low to the ground as you can get, hold your rifle steady, line the sights up with a perfect bead on the enemy's head, and squeeze the trigger gently, you get bupkis. 
The game includes a realistic inaccuracy simulator. I understand the theory, lining up iron sights is hard in real life, but the bullet will pretty much go right where it says it will. In a video game, it's difficult to convey the challenge in lining up shots, so Clear Sky just makes all the weapons inaccurate as fuck, like a two-inch sawn-off shotgun loaded with a wad of iron filings. This might work with crosshairs, but the feeling is way off when you use iron sights or scopes. Iron Sight's mode is supposed to be accurate. I understand that my character might not be super accurate, but when I've lined up a shot and I see it blaze off to the side of the screen like a bat out of hell, it's hard to stomach. Speaking of crosshairs, all of the pistols have had their sights removed. Why? No, really, I'm asking. I cannot figure it out. It makes pistols incredibly hard to aim, and it makes the game feel less realistic, which was one of the huge selling points of the original. Furthermore, when you have some guns using iron sights and some guns using an on-screen crosshair, you lose cohesion, and the game feels more scattered and more gamey. All of these things together combine to make Clear Sky incredibly unimmersive. There are a lot of things here to like, but the game is restricted. They don't want you to play it, they want you to watch, so you really feel like a helpless bystander. Nothing you do has an effect on the world. Your bullets don't go where you're aiming, half of the time the side quests don't even require your participation, you can't make money no matter how hard you try, and you can't fucking kill anything. Artifacts were revamped, and when I say revamped, what I really mean is totally ruined. They were admittedly streamlined, but there were a few problems introduced. In Shock, the artifacts were wonderfully varied. You could buff every aspect of your character using artifacts, giving the game some RPG elements that were not as shoehorned in as they are in a lot of modern shooters. You could use artifacts to, say, balance out a suit with poor anomaly protection, or make a scientist rad suit somewhat more resistant to bullets. You could also min-max your character. By choosing the right artifacts, you could create a character who generated health like a troll, but bled out if he even looked at him funny. Basically, artifacts were cool. In Clear Sky, artifacts are much reduced in effectiveness and variety. This makes sense from a story point of view. It's a prequel, so there wouldn't be as many kinds of artifact yet. But fuck it, you could write it the other way if you wanted to. Because the zone is still young, the variety and number of artifacts is higher. They haven't all been looted. See how easy that was? Plus, it would make the game worth playing. The artifacts in Clear Sky are just sort of boring. Most of them only help with anomaly protection, so they're not worth it unless you want to get more artifacts. It's a funny thing. Why use the artifacts? To get more artifacts? The end result is gonna be money any way you slice it. You can't make an uber character, because the game was balanced by sucking the fun out of it. So you just sell everything you get. Artifacts were made rarer and invisible. You can only find them in Clear Sky and again in Pripyat by using a detector. This aspect I like. Not necessarily the rarity, but the way they're found. You have to look around in large anomaly fields and then follow the beeping of your detector, throwing bolts and stuff to navigate the field successfully. But the payout is terrible. If you're in a poison anomaly, you'll find something that resists poison. Awesome, right? But it's not, because you already navigated the poison anomaly. Your reward is something that helps you leave. Why even go there in the first place? The worst part is, even if you fill every available artifact slot with the same type of artifact, min-maxing in theory, you still have abysmal protection. The numbers we're dealing with are like chemical plus one or electrical plus three. Those numbers are basically percentages. You have five slots, half as many as available in the last game, and only if you have maxed out armor pocket upgrades. And if you fill them all with the same artifact, you can get like 15 to 20% protection from something. Worthless. The damage you take from anomalies is so fucking high, you're a goner. Instead of killing you, they still kill you, but you end up slightly less dead. Big fucking whoop. Keep in mind, this still does nothing to protect you from the stupid area denial pockets of psi and radiation. Some asshole programmer must have just been working late one night and decided, fuck it, radiation damage? Nah, That'll teach the miserable fucks to buy our game. Between the bullets that don't work, and the bullies, and the restrictive environments, I feel like the game hates me. It's not all bad. Well, it is all bad, but CS still has some redeeming qualities. For one, it added a lot of things that I like. The new artifact is a step in the right direction to Call of Pripyat, and the Faction Wars system, while boring to actually participate in, is fun to look at on the map. I do wonder what the logic is in an enemy force that transmits its plans and intentions to your PDA. Wow, thanks for telling me that you plan to attack the forward outpost. I thought you knew we weren't on the same side, but okay. Hell, maybe that's just intercepted information. But if that's the case, why do hordes of mutants broadcast their destinations? Have they all been tagged by enterprising scientists? Did they accidentally eat the PDAs of the stalkers they subsist on? I don't get it. I like being able to fast travel between areas with guides. It's a feature that is actually handled extremely well, and it's disappointing that Call of Pripyat was too small to really need it. 
Plus, the guides are a nice continuity nod to the book and film that preceded Stalker. The upgrade system is also pretty cool. It's nice to be able to take sniper and assault trees for weapons, or decide on upgrading your suit with armor, anomaly protection, carry capacity, etc. This is also a bigger game than Shock. It's got more places to go, which helps it feel very complete. Call of Pripyat is tiny, and even the expansive Shock had a lot of dead space and cut locations. The world is also beautiful. There are a lot of nice graphics going on in Clear Sky. One common complaint, aside from the ridiculous demand of the engine on hardware, is that it's too bright. I don't mind that at all. The natural beauty of a world almost completely untouched by humans is a striking thing, and doesn't detract from the bleakness of the series in my opinion. Enough positives, let's rip on Clear Sky some more. Did I mention this game is buggy as shit? Because, uh, this game is buggy as shit. The first Stalker wasn't exactly a poster child for stability, but Clear Sky makes every attempt to be worse. The game crashes just about as much as Shock, but also has a number of smaller glitches just for fun. One of the worst minor glitches is enemies sticking their arms through doors. Just a bit of harmless fun, right? No, if their arms stick through an object, they can see through it. You know what else? They can also shoot through it. Well, not exactly through it, because their gun is on the other side. One of the worst places for this is the bandit base. If you're not on good terms with the bandits, which is understandable since they'll take all your money every time you see one, and I won't fucking stand for that, they'll slam the door to their hideout and start shooting whenever you get close. This makes it difficult to assault and kill the bandits as part of the faction wars, or just as revenge for the times they've robbed you blind, because you can't get into the base to kill everybody. If you don't manage to kill everybody, they'll respawn the next time you leave the area. The only way to eliminate the bandit faction is to take advantage of the door glitch. Yes, the main door to the bandit base is apparently not as solid as it could be. The bandits will stick their arms out the door and shoot you the fuck up. It would be slightly more annoying if it didn't allow you to actually assault the base successfully. What you do is, slow ever so fucking slowly, lure the enemies to the door of the base, and then shoot them in the fucking arms. Even though their arms, vision radius, and bullets all go through the door just fine, you'll still have trouble actually hitting them thanks to hit detection problems. But if you do finally kill all the bandits and finish the faction wars in favor of the neutral stalkers, the game seems to get lonely and discompletes the faction wars every few minutes. Ah dang, the bandits moved back in. Kill them a few more times, would ya? It's like lazy endgame MMO content. Oh yeah, and the game makes a pretty weak attempt at bullet penetration too. Realistic bullet penetration can make any game better. It gives battlefields a less contrived feel and makes buildings and objects feel like real buildings and objects and not just dead space behind the limits of the map. Clear sky? Shrubs are bulletproof. See an enemy creeping through the shrubbery towards you? Well, don't bother lighting him up because all you get is a particle effect of leaves flying through the air like fucking Kevlar confetti. And yet, what happens as you are escaping the army cordon at the beginning of the game? You get machine gunned by bullets that go straight through the trees and stumps littered around the area. So much for cover. That fucking army machine gunner. Lots of games start with a difficult segment, but it's rare for the difficulty curve in a game to resemble the Great Wall of China. This segment may very well be impossible on anything but the easiest difficulty setting, and even then you'll have to exhaust your entire stockpile of medical supplies before you get away. Stealth is not an option, even in the dead of night. Hiding behind trees, well, you know how that goes. Running like crazy, oh no, that gunner is an Olympic crack shot. So the game is frustrating and glitchy, but maybe for some reason you're still playing. Too bad it also crashes every five minutes. I've only seen this game through to completion once. Even if you're in the mood to play, the game just keeps crashing every time you start to make any progress. It just seems like there's too much going on for the game engine to handle. Your reward for putting up with all the bullshit is a story that is complete gibberish. The events of Clear Sky take place entirely before the plot of Shock, which is batshit insane, seeing as all the plot points are identical. In Clear Sky, you follow behind Straylock as he does everything he did in the first game. So somehow, everything that happened in Shock already happened before that, and then the universe hit some kind of fucking reset button. The entire plot of Shadow of Chernobyl would have been avoided if even one person said, Oh hey Straylock, how have you been, when the Marked One talked to them. I'm not kidding, it seems like maybe Clear Sky was supposed to be an alternate perspective to Shadow of Chernobyl, like a stalker version of Ender's Shadow. That could have been cool. I guess it was changed at some point, just really clumsily. In both Clear Sky and Shadow of Chernobyl, Straylock gets a prototype Psy helmet from the scientist at Yantar, perfects it, and shuts off the Brain Scorcher. How in the everlasting fuck does Sakharov not miss a beat when Straylock walks back in asking for a Psy helmet? 
The duplicate events of the two games makes it impossible to reconcile the overarching plot of the Stalker series. Clear Sky is either a careless oops, oh well, or a defiant fuck you to fans of the series. So fuck you, Clear Sky. Fuck you so much. Fuck you and your shitty racist voice acting you probably got from the Deus Ex cutting room floor. Fuck your inaccurate guns and your invincible enemies and your pitch black night and candle powered flashlight. Fuck your crashing, your glitches, your lazy kill zones, your pushy NPCs, and your pointless faction system. Come by next week. We're expecting some real high class herb that'll get you higher than high.